K2, also known as the Savage Mountain, proved its dangerous nature once again during the winter of 2021, with many victories and heartbreaking tragedies taking place on the mountain slopes. On January 16th, 2021, a team of Nepalese climbers accomplished the impossible by conquering K2 in harsh winter conditions. Just three weeks later, a true tragedy struck when a climber was killed in a fall and a trio of climbers went missing. Atanas Georgiev Skadov, a Bulgarian mountaineer, was a man of many visions. He was not only an accomplished mountaineer with a love for climbing, but also had a deep devotion to a vegan lifestyle. He also had a background in plant conservation as an agronomist. He was born on March 11, 1978, in Bulgaria, where he later graduated with honors from the Agricultural University with a master's degree in plant protection. His desire to make history drove him to push the boundaries of what was possible. He wanted to be the first vegan to climb the 14 highest peaks on the planet. These peaks are known as the crowns of Himalayas. Atana's goal was to accomplish all of this while avoiding the use of animal products. His climbing career began relatively late in 2010, and it wasn't until 2012 that he became actively involved in climbing. Nonetheless, in a short time, Skadov made a name for himself by becoming the first well-known person to climb the highest peaks of the seven continents in just three years on a vegan diet. In addition to being the only Bulgarian to climb Mount Everest from both the North and South Crest, for his ascent of Mount Everest in May 2014, he won the Golden Bulgaria Award. In May 2018, he earned the Golden Bulgaria Medal for Athlete of the Month for ascending mounts in the winter of 2021. The then 42-year-old Atanas and his team chose to climb K2. He was part of the commercial team's seven summit paths. It was a difficult plan with little time to acclimatize, but they already had 15 years of high altitude experience. On the evening of February 4th, more than 25 people were situated in High Camp 3. Skadov and his team decided to join and camped in their own tents. They brought six bottles of oxygen with the intention of keeping these bottles together, but the oxygen was not where it was supposed to be. There was a major problem with oxygen management, as if fate was already trying to tell them something. They understood that without the extra oxygen, they'd encounter serious issues and possibly die as they went higher towards Camp 3. The hike was inspired by their friends and fellow filmmakers, John Snorri and Juan Pablo. Ali Sadpara and his son Sajid intended to climb K2 as well. Sadpara's team had been on the mountain since December 5th and were well acclimatized by this point. Skadov and his team had only two and a half weeks to follow and film their colleagues during their climb. Skadov and his team were accepted too late on K2, and their rapid acclimatization plan relied entirely on supplemental oxygen. Due to a logistical error, they decided to abandon their climb. As they descended the Japanese Camp 3 and pitched their tent for the night in the harsh temperature of negative 35 degrees Celsius, their stoves barely worked to melt the ice, and the only thing that kept them warm was the warmth provided by the three men gathered together, insulated only from the cold. By 11 p.m., they had turned off the radio to conserve batteries, surrendering to the harsh winter night and realizing that they would not hear of their friend's adventure until the next day, so they packed their gear and continued their descent. The next day, one of them had already been hit directly on the head by a rock, and he was nervous the entire way down because the rock had pierced his helmet, so he was extremely cautious. With so many old ropes to choose from when descending, it can be difficult to decide which rope to take. When the Sherpas were unsure about the line, they would clip in the many ropes with one of their safety lines and rely on the rope they thought was the new one. But as they descended vertically into the Black Pyramid, a body passed them and the only thing they saw passing by in a flash was a red suit. They recognized Atanas right away, and he was falling quickly. His team watched in horror as their climbing colleague fell down the mountain. 
the body slipped down the snowy slopes of K2 with little warning, no screams, no noise, nothing. At that moment, they realized their friend was no longer alive and that the mountain had claimed another victim. He was very close to base camp when he fell off the trail at an altitude of about 7,400 meters. It was believed that Atanas had made a mistake changing ropes due to fatigue. The route on the mountain had recently been fitted with new ropes for the winter expedition the Alpine Club of Pakistan confirmed the incident and said Atanas' body was recovered by a... Uh, there appeared to be a malfunction resulting in the fall of Atanas. The rope was not broken. It was simply a mistake. He was either not careful enough or he was just unlucky according to the expedition manager. On the terrible day of Atanas' death, not only did he attempt to reach the summit of K2, but so did Muhammad Ali Sadpara and his son Sajid Sadpara. This expedition, which included Icelander John Snorri and Chilean Juan Pablo, ended in a dreadful nightmare. Mohamed Sadpara and the two other members, John Snorri and Juan Pablo, went missing and were later found dead. His son Sajid was the lone survivor. Since Sajid was also present on the mountain, he promised his family to find his father. He managed to conquer the top of K2. During his descent, he stopped at his father's body as he wanted to bury his father with dignity and honor. With the help of another climber, he buried his father's body. Sadpara stated that Atana's climbing partner and guide was upset and later uploaded a video he captured just days before Atanas's accident. In the footage, Atanas is seen latching onto a safety line and using his ATC to descend the fixed robes. Nothing unusual could be seen in the video, making it even more difficult to understand exactly what happened. He stated that his first thought was of Atanas' girlfriend, who was at base camp accompanying him on his journey up the world's second tallest peak. He knew that she and so many others would be devastated by the news of his tragic death. This is a striking reminder of the inherent dangers and sacrifices involved in scaling the world's highest peaks. Skada's death was the third tragic incident involving a Bulgarian mountaineer in recent years. In May 2018, Bojan Petrov went missing while climbing the Shishapangma, and a year later, Ivan Tomov died on Mount Lodz. Atanas was a true inspiration to many. He demonstrated that age was just a number, and that there was always time to engage in mountaineering. He chose to follow his dreams, and dedicated himself to his true mission. Skadov scaled some of the world's highest peaks and showed that anyone can achieve great things with enthusiasm, hard effort, and dedication. His legacy will continue to encourage others to pursue their ambitions. Atanas once said that dreaming means being bold, courageous, fearless, sensible, and above all, believing in yourself. He also said that the difference between having a dream and making it come true depends on the strength of your spirit your belief in yourself, how much you want to achieve this dream, and how much effort you would put into making it happen. This was the legacy of a remarkable and a wonderful hiker who surpassed all barriers in order to prove to the world that if you put your mind to something and intend to achieve it with all the might and dedication, there is nothing that can stop you from achieving it. Since no one saw the sequence of actions Atanas took before he fell, it is impossible to say for sure what happened. But it is assumed that a mistake was made when switching lines. You are depending on the fact that you haven't made a mistake when you unclip your safety and entrust your entire weight and life on the safety line with your abseal device, because if you have, you will perish. K2 is a ruthless, steep mountain. If you fall, it's likely that you won't stop until you reach the mountain's base. His girlfriend, Shenny, who was in base camp with him when he ascended the second tallest peak in the world, was devastated by this information, as would be so many others. The worst dread of every climber was what happened to Atanas, but he will not be remembered by what he failed to achieve, but by what he did. Despite the odds, he was firm in his belief, staunch as a mountain, and he died doing what he loved, 
unlike most of us who spend our lives away looking for a moment of clarity and happiness in our lives. His end may have been tragic to some, but what he achieved left a legacy that would be revered and remembered for generations to come. Let us know in the comments what you think about Skadov's journey and how, together, we can pay tribute to his legendary life. Like, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon. It's somewhere down there and all it takes for you is a click, but for us, your feedback means the world.